So let us see the first one. A 45 year old myopic patient complaining of sudden loss of vision preceded by floaters was diagnosed as retinal detachment. As you know, in dramatogenous retinal detachment, the patient has floaters, flashes, and then sudden painless loss of vision. There are flashes of light and then field effect and ultimately leads to sudden painless loss of vision. Where will be the fluid present in the scenario? The question is a very simple question. Then in retinal detachment, where is a fluid present? The answer to the question is subretinal space. What is that? So retina is 10 layers. The inner nine layers is neurosensory retina. And the last layer is the retinal pigment epithelium. The definition of retinal detachment is separation of neurosensory from the last layer. And here is the fluid that is a subretinal space. In this question, this is OCT showing the central retinal detachment that is central serous retinopathy. Okay, so subretinal space is between the inner nine layers of retina and the last layer retinal pigment epithelium. I'll tell you some more points. What is this? If all the 10 layers are separated from the choroid, that is sub RP space, okay, that is in pigment epithelium detachment. All the 10 layers are uh, detached from the choroid that is seen in age related macular degeneration condition, okay. Okay, then what is this uh, sub hyaloid space? See, when uh, vitreous is separated from the retina, so space between the vitreous and the retina is a sub hyaloid space. This is uh, showing a posterior vitreous detachment. So that is sub hyaloid space between vitreous and the retina and suprachoroidal space. Between the choroid and the sclera, there is a suprachoroidal space in which there are posterior ciliary vessels, short and long, which can rupture uh, as a most dangerous, most uh, dangerous complication of cataract surgery leading to suprachoroidal hemorrhage. So these are some spaces and one, one extra clinical point I have told you. Okay, so the answer was subretinal space to the question. Second question, what could be the diagnosis in the scenario? Uh, blurred vision. Gradual onset uh, with halos around the light, colored halos, cornea has reduced corneal sensation. So let us see out of these uh, characteristics which has reduced sensation. Of course, we know virus has reduced sensations. Okay, so uh, either it's an interstitial virus or a disiform virus. Then a central zone of so uh, stromal edema, desmond folds and keratic precipitates, there's vesely immune ring. See, vesely immune ring can be seen in any keratitis fungus, viral, acanthamoeba, bacteria, any, okay, but if you get a question, vesely immune ring, you can go with fungal keratitis, but here, uh, that is non-specific, here you have viral keratitis as reduced colon sensation and central edema, okay, whenever the endothelium is involved, then the patient has central edema, and because of the central colon edema, the patient can have colored halo, so that is matching as well, so the answer is, of course, disiform viral keratitis, that is affecting the endothelium layer of cornea, okay, whenever the endothelium is compromised, the patient can have corneal edema, and when the patient can have corneal edema, there can be colored halos. There can be desmond folds as well, keratic precipitates. Uh, it's a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Interstitial uh, affects the stroma, that is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction against the viral antigen. So the answer is disiform viral keratitis. What other ophthalmological findings one would, ex would, would not expect in a patient with this eye feature? This one. And this is what, this is a, a op optic nerve tumor, fusiform appearance, it is optic nerve glioma. Optic nerve glioma is a very important clinical feature of neurofibromatosis 1. The other features are, of course, sphenoid dysplasia, posterior capsular cataract, S-shaped deformity, xanthogranuloma is not associated with NF. Okay, so it can be, optic nerve glioma can be seen in NF1, NF2, uh, sphenoid dysplasia, uh, all these three are uh, present in NF, but xanthogranuloma glioma is a... Uh, sort of iris a benign tumor in which in child there is recurrent hemorrhages. So NF1, this is, this is S-shaped deformity of the eyelid that is plexiform neurofibroma <coughs> that was optimum of glioma. Most common NFN ophthalmic manifestation is leash nodules <coughs> and sphenoid dysplasia is also there. Posterior of calcio cataract is the most common manifestation, ocular manifestation of NF2. Okay, but xanthoglioma is no relation with uh, NF. So that is the exception answer to the question. Which of these tests should be done before doing gonioscopy? So this is a logical question. See, gonioscopy, you indent the cornea. You press onto the cornea to look at the angle of entry chamber. See, if you press onto the cornea, it will artifactually lower the intraocular pressure. So intraocular pressure measurement is important before gonioscopy because otherwise you will get false low values. Okay, that is a logical question and the answer to this question is C, IOP. Then, all of the following can be associated with the condition in the USG B scan. What is this? 
ultrasound B scan. This is the retina, this is the lens. Something is joining the retina and the uh, uh, optic disc and the lens. What is it? It is persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Okay, that is the remnant of the hyaloid vessel. It can be associated with retinal attachment. Yes, microphthalmus. Yes, it is. It has blood vessels, so it can uh, the blood can go into the vitreous, vitreous hemorrhage. Yes, but it is not associated with asteroid hyalosis. Okay, that is the answer to the question D. Asteroid hyalosis. This was uh, seen when the doctor examined a 52 year old uh, female in the clinic. She gave a history of double vision. What is this? This is uh, right eye. This is left eye. Left eye is inside. So left esotropia can be because of lateral left lateral lectus palsy that is left signal palsy that's when the patient has double vision diplopia and esotropia eso has uncrossed diplopia so d is the correct answer condition can be due to diabetes mellitus signal palsy most common cause is ischemia diabetes and hypertension yes that is also correct diplopia is maximum when she looks left always say in left lr palsy uh, left lr is on the left side so when the patient looks on the left in that direction, there will be maximum diplopia, so B is also correct. She could avoid the diplopia by suppressing the left eye. See, suppression capability is present only in less than 8 years of children. This is 52 year old female, so that is wrong. She can develop, she can uh, uh, avoid diplopia either by occlusion, because it is a binocular diplopia, so occlusion of either eye, or she can do a compensatory face turn towards the left. Okay, so that is the answer. C is incorrect, and that is the answer to the question. Next, uh, minus 2 diopter sphere with plus 1 diopter uh, cylinder at 90 degree. What type of refractive error is this? Uh, see, you can do this as I told you, minus 2 in uh, both the axes. Plus 1 is kept at 90 degree, so it will act here. So it will become minus 2 and minus 1. It is compound myopic and vertical is more myopic. Vertical is more steeper. So compound myopic astigmatism with the rule is the answer. A 50 year old patient who is unable to see from the left eye since many years suddenly developed pain and brightness in his eye. Examination following findings are noted. What could be the diagnosis? Vision is very poor. PL congestion, uh, redness is there. IOP is very very high. 44 with shallow entry chamber. Cells are present in dense cataract. Ultrasound and you give means ultrasound is uh, normal. Means posterior segment is normal. Important question is, so here the answer can be, uh, either it can be C. Phacolytic glaucoma you can rule out because phacolytic glaucoma has no high intraocular pressure, dense cataract, hypermature, but the anterior chamber is normal to deep. Okay. Phacomorphic glaucoma, acute congestive glaucoma, both will have shallow entry chamber. But see, the other eye has normal entry chamber. Means in of course if the patient is have angle closure, it has angle closure in both eyes. So you rule out acute congestive glaucoma from this. Phacomorphic glaucoma is answered as phacomorphic glaucoma is what? In the incipient stage or intubation stage of cataract. The cataract becomes so uh, solar, the lens becomes so solar now it pushes the iris forward and closing the angle. And if the angle is close, secondary angle closure, the pressure will be high. That is the answer. Fecomorphic glaucoma. Why not uh, acute anterior uveitis? There are cells, but there is no reason. Uh, there can be pupil block, iris can be pushed forward, there can be high pressures in uh, acute anterior uveitis, yes. But there would not be dense cataract in acute anterior uveitis. So that is the least uh, option over here. You will choose phacomorphic glaucoma is answer to this question. Okay. Features will go in favor of senile ptosis as compared to congenital ptosis. See, you have to remember in congenital ptosis, the LPS muscle is dystrophy. That's why there is absence of lid crease. Whereas in uh, acquired ptosis, there is high eyelid crease. Okay. Levator function in senile is good. There is absence of lid, lid lag is present in congenital ptosis. So there is absence of lid lag. There is that's why the name is aponeurotic because there is there is problem in the aponeurosis of LPS. But the lid crease is high, and that is the answer to the question. Lid crease is absent in congenital ptosis, whereas lid crease is high in senile aponeurotic ptosis. The last question. These are the findings. The patient's recurrent redness and photophobia. Which of the following which might not be present in the eyes of the patient? What is this? This is lupus perneo. This is sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a granulomatous uveitis. Yes, coepian adults can be present. It's a granulomatous. So it's a mutton fat KPs can be present. Headlight and fog appearance is seen in toxoplasmosis. What light headlight, uh, headlight and fog? Toxoplasmosis. There is single choroid lesion looking like a headlight with a lot of vitritis. Looking like a headlight of a motorcycle or a car coming in fog. That is seen in toxoplasmosis. And that is the answer to this question. 